This is 7 National News and in our top story, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, attended the 2014 edition of the Festival Mondial d'Endurance in France. Accompanied by Dubai's Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed witnessed the tremendous achievement secured by the UAE riders at the Endurance Mondial sponsored by the Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival. UAE rider Saif Ahmed Al Mazrui on Nopali Del Ma won the 160 km three star ride, which is one of the qualifiers for the World Equestrian Games to be held in Normandy in France next August. 16 UA riders took part in the festival on Friday out of 101 riders from 32 countries across the globe. The UAE has highlighted the importance of increased coordination between the member countries of the GCC in order to help achieve economic integration in the region. The statement came at the 24th meeting of the GCC Ministerial Committee for planning and development that was held in Kuwait this week. The UAE delegation was led by Mohammed Abdelaziz Al Shehi, the Under Secretary for the Ministry of Economy, who stated that coordination in planning among the GCC member countries should be accelerated in order to keep pace with the resurgent economic needs, rising population, and the increasing number of projects under development. He also reiterated the UAE's priority in achieving sustainable development across all operations and initiatives in order to benefit the people of the GCC. During the meeting, a proposal was also made by the Kuwaiti Minister of Planning and Development Affairs, Hind Alus Bey, to establish a Pan Gulf Research Centre for Planning and Development. The meeting also focused on the Millennium Development Goals post-2015. The MDGs include achieving water security, food security, effective healthcare, a qualitative education system, creating sustainable job opportunities, gender equality and youth empowerment, besides developing energy efficient supplies and preserving ecological systems. Post offices across the UAE will remain closed tomorrow in observance of Al Isra Wal Mirage. Services at all post offices will resume the next day. That's according to Emirates Post Group. However, the post office located inside the Dubai International Airport will remain open 24 hours. Meanwhile, the ambulatory healthcare services, a part of the Abu Dhabi Health Services Company, has announced revised working hours for facilities across its network. Both Al Yahar and Meziad healthcare centres will remain open from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., while Al Katim, Al Haya, Al Kua, and Swayhan healthcare centres will remain open for 24 hours in order to assist emergency cases. The Sharjah Directorate of Public Works is building an engine maintenance workshop as well as an ice factory worth a combined 3.40 million dirhams in order to help boost the fishing industry and support fishermen. His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Saka El Kazmi, the chairman of the directorate, told a press conference that His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Kazmi, the member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Sharjah, has directed that the industry be given continued support as it is a traditional means of livelihood as well as a major key to economic growth. The marine engine maintenance workshop is being developed in the Al Shark area in Corfu Can. The two-story building will have state-of-the-art equipment and will provide repair and maintenance services to derricks. It is expected to be inaugurated by the end of the year. Additionally, the two-story Corfican Ice Factory will produce 12 tonnes of ice per day in order to meet the requirements of the city and nearby areas. There were 210 accidents involving motorbikes across the country last year and 16 bikers were killed. Abu Dhabi police statistics also showed that 236 people suffered moderate to serious injuries in 2013. 
And Brigadier General Gaith Alzabi, the Director General of Traffic Coordination at the Ministry of Interior, revealed that they were caused by motorists' errors and also failure to follow police instructions. In January, the ministry launched a three-month campaign called Beware of Motorbike Dangers in order to create awareness. Safety experts were quoted in a local daily as saying that road swerving commonly seen by bikers poses a huge threat to motorists, as many are not visible in vehicle mirrors. If they need to change lanes, a clear signal should be given for safety. Since June last year, motorbike riders in Abu Dhabi have been banned from overtaking other vehicles while waiting at traffic lights and junctions. Violators face a week-long impoundment of the motorbike, a fine of 200 dirhams and three black points. Additionally, bikers who choose not to wear a helmet will also risk a 200 dirham fine and four black points. Prisoners at the Dubai Central Prison are learning skills, and some are even earning their keep while serving their sentences. With a system that is more reformative than punitive, officials at the Dubai Central Prison revealed in a local report the variety of learning programs they provide for inmates, which keep them busy and out of trouble, which makes their job as authorities a lot easier. The prison has programs divided into four segments, religious, educational, sports and vocational. The crafts department has 150 inmates who create everything from chests to furniture, and they work five days a week from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. They also receive a monthly salary through an e-cash system with a 5% bonus from annual sales. The educational system in place allows inmates to attain a high school education, learn Arabic and road safety. They also have the Quran recital program that allows inmates to reduce their sentences on a case-to-case -case basis, which teaches them about faith and peace. They also hold sports competitions in order to encourage inmates to become more active. On Friday, 1,500 school children from the, across the UAE tested their speed, accuracy and calculation skills in solving 200 arithmetic problems in just eight minutes. The 11th annual National Abacus and Mental Arithmetic Competition witnessed students aged between four and 12 add, subtract, multiply and divide numbers using the abacus. According to age, they were divided into eight categories and given questions. While not everyone managed to solve all the problems, students said the arithmetic training, the universal concept of mental arithmetic system, which involved the use of an abacus to calculate faster, has made their minds more sharp. Three years ago, at my tender age, I joined UC Mass. At that time, I was in grade one, and I was not that good in maths. When I joined UCMAS, I found that it was very interesting. This UCMAS helped me to win the prestigious Hamdan Award also. And then uh, from in my class, I'm so good at maths that my friends call me the maths wizard. It inspired me a lot to do well in all exams and all uh, all exams and I can also and I also do well in all events it improved my leadership qualities and it also inspired me to help my peers five years ago I joined UC bus I didn't know what was UC bus but after I practiced a lot and I went for my first competition the Z category I had got a little star and I, I was very happy after getting a little star and, and it, that inspired me for getting going to more competitions and getting more prizes after that I got more interest in UC bus and started practicing more and that has helped me getting more prizes till now. And in my school also, I, I'm, the, I'm the best in maths, everybody tells me like that. And they also come in, I should become a mathematicist when I grow up. Nearly 100 instructors were at the venue to mark the pupils, and each tutor took about a minute to correct a paper. The competition was only for pupils training at the Universal Concept of Mental Arithmetic System, or USAMAS, which is headquartered in Malaysia. In the UAE, there are 30 centres running at present, with each one providing two-hour after-school classes on a weekly basis. However, Soundari Raj, the Managing Director of Usamus UAE, said that their programme is not just about problem-solving, but skill development. 
Uzumas in the country trains 7,000 children a year. The skill development program we are giving for the children of age group 5 to 12 years. And it's basically skill development, brain power development program. So here the main aim is to develop the lifetime skills for the children, for example. From, we expect children to have good listening, listening, concentration, and presentation, and then memory, photographic memory, and on, on top of all, we have to have this accuracy, creativity, and speed and accuracy. Among all these skills, no, all are abstract, except one, that is speed and accuracy. So we showcase this skill to the parents. The best ones, they are selected, they are sent to international competition in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia every year, which, which will happen in December every year. All children are born equal and uh, the opportunity and the right training is the one what makes the, a genius out of the child. From the age of 4 to 14, the brain development of the child is very, very high. The brain of the left side brain is controlling right, right side of the body and uh, right brain is controlling left. So what we do more work with the right hand, therefore the left brain is working. So what we do, we using abacus methods, we activate the right side brain to its full potential. So it will be uh, more than a trillion times more powerful than the left side brain. That means once the brain foundation has become strong, the child can accept any subject, whether it is algebra or zoology, A to Z, any subject. So with these abacus methods, the children will become very, very successful in their academic activities. And finally, looking to other news now, the world of beauty came alive on Thursday night as the Viva Beauty Awards celebrated the very best beauty products here in the region. Around 350 of Dubai's glamour set gathered for a gala dinner at the JW Marriott Marquis Hotel in Dubai to celebrate the awards, which was sponsored by national health insurance company Daman. Winners of the 7th annual Viva Beauty Awards were voted for by Viva magazine readers after a judging panel and the Viva team whittled down a shortlist of the latest products on the market. After weeks of testing and evaluating, hundreds of beauty products were chosen across a number of categories, including skincare, hair care and makeup. There were 21 awards presented in total across the prestige and mass market categories, including best foundation, best perfume, best mascara, best nail polish, to name just a few. It's huge prestige for the brands that actually win the awards. It just is, you know, solidifies their um, place in the market as well because there's so many products on the market. So to be chosen as the winner out of, we literally had 2,000 products. So to be chosen as one of those winners, it, it means a lot. And obviously, you know, they can, they can use that when it comes to branding. They can also use that when it comes to people looking to find out if, if they're reliable products. And the Middle East has always been a place which is very big on beauty. I mean, you only have to look around to see the beauty salons. Um, everywhere in, um, in Dubai. So it's always been one of those sectors. It's been a huge industry. But what I'm noticing more and more is the fact that they're introducing um, organic products, which is becoming bigger and bigger, which obviously in Australia and America and England is quite a big side of um, beauty. So I notice that's becoming a bigger thing. The, the issue with the Middle East as well is we're challenged by also climate. So people's skin gets very dehydrated, you're in air conditioning all the time. I mean, it's a harsh climate for a person's skin. So unlike Europe and other countries, they don't really have to compete with all this. So the products here have to be very tailored to the market. With the organic products, I think people are just getting more and more aware of what people put on their faces these days. They don't want the chemicals. They, they want things that are natural, like the rose oil, argan oil, tea tree oil. So that's becoming a, a lot better um, in this region. It's been a challenge. Uh... You know, we don't have the budget that the big multinationals have, uh, the spend, as they say, whether it's in store or in print or in magazines. So our strategy has been really to educate, to try and uh, educate the consumer and raise an awareness that there's an, uh, the benefits of using organic or natural products. 
in, in most uh, sectors, uh, this region is, 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 is developing and it's, 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 it, and it's developing at a very fast pace, but they've always been a follower. So if it was a European brand or a North American brand, people were used to being told that that's a good thing. I think it's very refreshing as a homegrown UAE brand to be able to offer something to the consumer. And what's actually really interesting is we're, we're actually in negotiations with very large European retailers to take a UAE brand west. And it's hopefully early next year we'll have some good news on that. So to be recognized by voters uh, and uh, magazine editors and experts that you know we're, we're in that category would be great. But the fact that we're nominated is, is, is just is amazing anyway. Some of the winners in the mass category included Tresemme's Salon Silk Conditioner for Best Hair Product, the Body Shop's Sheer Body Butter as Best Body Product, and L'Octane Magnolia and Moor for Best Perfume. As for the prestige category, Chanel's Perfection Lumiere Velvet Smooth Effect Makeup won for Best Foundation, and Clarins Double Serum won Best Anti-Aging Product. Well, I, I actually won the Gracia Style Awards, and ever since then, uh, there were so many opportunities that came up, so I'm pretty sure the brands that win here would have better opportunities. Uh, people would want to get their hands on those products, so I think it's really good for business, which is what everyone ultimately wants. I judge the products according to what would suit my skin, uh, my lifestyle, Dubai weather, and um, yeah, it was everything from you know moisturizers to mascaras to lipstick. So it was pretty much uh, I judge it very personally because that's what I do as a blogger. And I, there were some amazing, amazing products that I didn't even know about, and I'm using now, so it's really good.